Hey home bakers, it's Jack here, bakerjack.co.uk, and by now you probably know that all breads come out of the oven looking crusty, but how do you get that crust to stay put after it's cooled down? Roll that thing tune. Hello to you and welcome back to the Bakery Jack YouTube channel where I believe there is no mystical, magical recipe that will make you an amazing home baker. What you actually need is all those little bits and bobs that nobody ever talks about. A true education in the principles and that's exactly what we talk about here on the Bakery Jack YouTube channel. Isn't it disappointing when your loaf comes out of the oven with a crispy, crackly crust and as you let it cool down and rest, it all goes soft again? I get it. Today we're gonna to talk about the factors that contribute to your crispy crust and how we can use our knowledge of those factors to make the crust that stays. As you may suspect by now on this channel that things aren't always as simple as they seem. So at the end of the video, if all other attempts fail, I will tell you how to get the crispiness back. A great crust comes from two things, high heat and steam combined. The high heat bakes a solid crust on the outside of your bread dough, so it makes sense that the hotter you can bake your bread for longer, the crispier crust you'll get, but you don't want stuff to start going back now, do you? And that's exactly what the steam is here for. When baking in a humid environment, consider the steam to be your burn buffer. It's not the only reason why we use it, but it does slow the rate that your loaf takes on colour, allowing you to bake things for hotter, for longer, without it burning as fast. Everything comes out of the oven crusty, that's just the way, but the true test is what your bread is like after it's cooled down. Whatever comes next is an indication of how well you baked with steam, and that's a team effort consisting of how much steam you got into your oven in the first place, that's something that you did, and how well the steam stayed inside your oven, and that's down to your oven. If your bread is still good and crusty after it's cooled, then congratulations, high five yourself, you nailed it. If it went soft after cooling, it's just the loaf's way of letting you know that next time you can change something. And if the two contributing factors are high heat and steam, then the rest of this video writes itself. Here's what you can do. Extend the initial high heat bake period for longer. In some recipes you'll see that the initial part of the baking is a nice high heat. For example, you might see uh, to bake a loaf on 230 degrees C for 15 minutes and then followed by 180 degrees C for another 30 minutes. That's 45 minutes total bake time. But what if you extended that first high heat part, giving your loaf more opportunity to develop a nice thick crust in the beginning? You could take it up to 20 minutes at 230 degrees and the rest of the time 25 minutes at 180 keeping the overall bake time the same at 45 minutes but just giving it a booster in the beginning that way you can extend that first part as far as you like as long as nothing takes on too much color extend the total baking time bake for longer, add another five or 10 minutes onto the end of your baking time to give your loaf more opportunity to have a crispy crust on the outside after it's cooled down. Exactly the same as before, so long as nothing burns, have a play with the timings, and it could be as simple as just baking it longer. Find a way of getting extra steam into your oven, whatever method you're using, Double it up. If you're using the spray gun method with one of these, use two spray guns instead. If you do a hot tray of water in the bottom of your oven method like I do, use two trays instead of one. You've just doubled your steam production. Have a think about other ways you could maximize the steam inside of your oven. Before we get onto number four and the other thing I was gonna talk about, let's detour a little bit and consider the professional baker. In a bakery, your bread is baked on a temperature higher than your oven ever goes for the entire duration. And you know how they get away with it? Steam injection. 
maximum steam. Their ovens are like letterboxes, so there isn't a big massive space to fill with steam like there is in our ovens at home. And they're baking 36 loaves in one go instead of one or two like we are. And they generate their own steam. They are pretty much guaranteed to get a good crust that stays because their equipment is literally made for that purpose. Ours at home isn't. We can only do our best, which brings me nicely along to point number four. I mentioned earlier that your results are a team effort between you and your oven and all ovens are different. Your oven might not have a tight fitting door and so the steam escapes. Some of them are designed with vents to eject steam and you might be in the unfortunate position where you fill up a tray with water and it almost immediately evaporates and disappears into the air. If this is you, if this is the case, try a Dutch oven. I don't have one to show you, I'm afraid. It's a deep casserole dish almost type thing with a lid on. But the point is, it's got a lid on the top. You're baking inside a contained environment and your loaf will make its own steam, meaning you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You just pop it in the pot and bake it and it steams itself, hopefully making the crust that you're after. Experiment and adjust things and see what works for you. And if your loaf is still losing its crust after it's cooled down, then here's something you can do. Bake your loaf and let it cool down. When the crust has gone soft, get yourself a spray gun like this and spritz it, making it wet all over. Then return it to the oven, 180 degrees C or possibly 200 for 10, 12, 15 minutes, just enough to bring back that crust and that will make a crust that stays. Remember this, you are only going to know how well you have done after your loaf has cooled down and so this is something you're going to be working on bake after bake. I feel like there's a mentality surrounding recipes and baking and cooking where you just follow the steps down to the end and you've cracked it but that's not the way, you have to put in the practice bake by bake and practicing with an appreciation of the long term is exactly what separates out the professionals from the amateurs. Experience is repetition. It's as simple as that. So practice, have a play, tweak, adjust things, write them down for next time and do it all over again. Listen, thank you all so much for being here every single time. I hope this helps you out on your bread making journey and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye. And there it is. Did you know if you don't want to miss any of my content, you can get it for free posted straight into your inbox. There's a link in the description of this video if you want to sign up for your free home baker's bulletin and you won't miss a thing. See you next time.